Hi, welcome back. And today we're going to cover Daniel chapter 12, summary of Revel the Revelation. And uh, be before we begin, let's open in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that we have been able to go through every chapter in the book of Daniel. And I pray that this series would be an encouragement to people to help them study the word, help them to learn, and also to dig deeper on their own, Lord. Lord, we've planted a lot of seeds and shown a lot of scripture in this series. And I pray that it helps uh, encourage each and every one of us to look forward to the things that are coming. If we're in the body of Christ, we're saved, that we have the eternal hope and the blessed hope that Jesus Christ is going to return anytime soon. And also a warning to those that are still not uh, in the body of Christ and have not uh, fully trusted and believed in the death, burial, and resurrection for their sins. So I pray that this lesson would would be uh, blessed by you, and we thank you. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Okay, Daniel chapter 12, and this is the last chapter of our Daniel series, and I'm excited about finishing this this series. There's only 12 verses. It's the, the shortest chapter in Daniel, but actually there's the most, the most powerful uh, things in this as well, and so we look forward, to, look forward to giving you what God's Word has. And uh, also a reminder of after this lesson, I want to do a series on the book of Zechariah, and there's 14 chapters in the book of Zechariah, so we're going to dig a little bit deeper into there. And, and one of the things I've, I've learned uh, about studying these things, everybody always goes to the books of Daniel and Revelation for future prophecy, but it's all over. Actually, it's in Job. It's in the book of Proverbs, the Psalms. There's prophecy everywhere in the Bible if you just know where to look and, and dig and rightly divide. But uh, we're going to come to a close, and I said there was 12 verses in Daniel. I'm at 13, I apologize, but we are in this short chapter, and we're coming to a close, and it's kind of a summary of what uh, has happened uh, in the prophecies that was given to, the, to Daniel, the prophet. And uh, so let's just dig right into it. Let's read verse 1, first of all. The Bible says, and at that time, notice this, at that time, he, he repeats it twice. He says it first here. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble. Notice this time of trouble. It's also known in Jeremiah as the time of Jacob's trouble for his people. This isn't for the church. This is for Israel. A time of trouble such as never was since a nation, okay, speaking of Israel, the nation of Israel, and such uh, even... To that same time, and at that time, he's speaking of two different time periods. At that time, thy people shall be delivered. Every one shall be found written in the book. So he's talking about there's a beginning point of the tribulation and an end point, which we know is seven years. And uh, so at that time, the first at that time will be the rapture of the church. This is when Michael stands up, Michael the prince. And it's interesting when the Bible speaks of the rapture of the church that Michael is actually mentioned. Paul mentions Michael in, uh, in reference to the, the rapture. And why is that? Because uh, as Michael stands up, he's getting ready to launch this spiritual battle against uh, the devil and his angels, Michael and his angels. And as the, the church ascends, the devil descends. But let's read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18 to get that. The Bible says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. So that's the first thing that's going to happen. The Lord's going to descend with a shout. And then with the voice of the archangel, that's Michael, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. There's the, the dead in Christ shall be rise at this this time. And this is notice in this passage when Michael stands up, that's when the trouble starts. But here in this passage, the dead in Christ rise up. So, so obviously the, the, the church is raptured out before the events of of Daniel can happen for his people, the nation of Israel. And it says, then we, Paul speaking we, he's speaking of the body of Christ, because he is in the body. Then we which are alive and remain, those that are still left uh, as part of the church, alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. So people say there's no rapture of the church. The, the church gets raptured up into the clouds. I mean, I'm sorry, the dead in Christ gets raised up first. And then we which are alive and remain should be caught up together with them in the clouds. How can people miss that? I don't know, but they do. They, people, for some reason, want to go through the tribulation, but it's our blessed hope. I keep 
I can't emphasize that enough that the church will not be going through the tribulation. It says, We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord, not the tribulation. We won't be going through that. We will be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. What comfort would it be if he, if Paul was saying, now listen, you got to endure to the end. Don't You're going to have to get your head cut off. Don't take the mark of the beast. Paul never mentions that one time. So the, the, the rapture will happen. And then the time of uh, that Daniel speaking, the time of, of trouble, Jacob's trouble will happen. So this is why Michael, again, is connected with the rapture. And as we are going up, the devil is coming down. For that, let's look at Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. And the Bible says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and, and fought against his angels. So I believe that when that moment, I mean, I believe it's happening right now. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. There's spiritual wickedness in high places already already taking place it's invisible to our eye at one time in the book i think it's first or second kings elijah prayed that uh the man, young man's eyes would be open be able to see the armies of god and they were surrounding there, there's a spiritual battle that's taking place that we can't see with our physical eyes but it is taking place and so michael and his angels are fighting against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels verse eight and prevailed not neither was their place found any more in heaven in the Remember where there's a firmament, the dome above. The, the Satan is called the prince of power of the air. He's up at not outer space, but in the air. And there's a battle, invisible battle that we can't see. Uh, and if you watch my video, what the Bible says about earthquakes, uh, which will be coming out soon, you'll see, uh, I'll kind of explain that a little bit further. But there is a battle that's taken place. And uh, this battle, once the rapture has taken place, the total victory for the church is won. We are in Christ forever. Then the devil says they prevailed not. The, the battle is lost. They will be uh, placed on this earth. And that's when the tribulation starts for Israel. And it says, Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. It's, it's going to be a, a very bad time, very bad time for this earth when this takes place. And that's what uh, uh, Michael, this Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, is talking about Michael standing up for his people. Now let's read, uh, oh, for the notice that the time of the trouble is for the people of Israel. I already said that, and this Notice the second at this time in verse 1 of Daniel chapter 12 is speaking of the second advent, the return of Jesus Christ. Uh, the Bible said, uh, note, also notice that it was that there's names found in the book because they can't be part of the body of Christ. The, our name, we, are, we are in the body of Christ. These people have to endure to the end. They have to have faith and works to be... Uh, saved in the end and their body and their names have to be found in the book of life now let's look back in daniel chapter 12 verse 2 and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame some to shame and everlasting contempt and that that's not now paul was not talking about this event he says some of them that sleep in the dust uh, the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to, together with them in clouds. There was no mention about some everlasting contempt. This is a, an event that will take place uh, long after the millennial reign, even after the second advent. The Bible, for that, let's look at Revelation chapter 20, verses 12 through 13. The Bible says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. Just like Daniel speaking. And another book was opened, which is called the Book of Life. And the dead were judged out of those things were, which were written in the books according to their works, what they did on this life. That's not the body of Christ. Uh, and the Bible says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. So every person that has existed before... Uh, I guess before Adam, all the way up to uh, 
uh, the end of the millennial reign will have their works judged. But we are in a dispensation, the mystery of the church. We are in the body of Christ. And the Bible says we will be with him forever. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, it's, just, it's so important to rightly divide and not get these things mixed up. Now, for for the Jews that will be uh, brought up at the end of this uh, uh, second advent, uh, David even speaks of this. He says in Psalm 17, verse 15, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I will be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. So he speaks about this resur re resurrection. Jesus also spoke of this resurrection. John 5, verse 29, And shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resur re resurrection of damnation. So that's the everlasting contempt that Daniel was speaking of. It's two different events. There's the rapture of the church and then the judgment seat. Your works will be judged. The rewards be given. But we will be saved, yet so as by fire, Paul said. But this group will be judged according to the works, what they did to, during the tribulation, during this time of trouble. Uh, now, let's go back to Daniel chapter 12. Let's read verse 3. And they that shall be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that, that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Now, these angels, notice these angels are stars, and this is a reference to the Jews at, after the great white throne judgment. Uh, Jesus spoke of this in Mark chapter 12, verse 25, when he said, for when they shall rise from the dead, speaking of this event, they shall neither marry nor are given given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven, which these stars, these stars shall shine as the stars. Uh, that would be another uh, video I hopefully will have soon would be uh, what are angels? The angels are simply stars, stars. And it's uh, like a it's their physical manifestation that we can't see spiritually, but it's a uh, it. That is what they are. The Bible declares this many times in his word. But it says, When they shall rise from the dead, they shall neither marry nor are given in marriage. This is Jesus speaking to the Jews during this time. These will be the, the people that will uh, endure to the end during the tribulation. And notice they're also called wise virgins. Look at Matthew chapter 25. Remember Daniel said, They, sh they that, that shall be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Matthew 26, 25, verses 6 through 7, and then 9 through 10, talk about these wise virgins. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. So this will be a, a, a post-tribulation rapture for the Jews. But the wise answered and said, Not so, lest there be not enough for us in you. But Go ye rather to sell them and buy for yourselves. Notice works. Works were involved in their salvation. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went with him into the marriage. What marriage? The marriage that had already been taking place, the, the church, the bride of Christ. Uh, these groups, uh, are, they're, they're going to meet the bridegroom, but they're not going there to marry him. They're going there to meet him. And then the door was shut. There was another uh, a post-tribulation rapture before the second advent. I know it may sound confusing, but when you rightly divide, things make total sense. It's so clear. It really is clear. Now, uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. The Bible says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. I think that's what we're seeing today is this increase in knowledge like we've never known before with computers and with technology and, and uh, AI, artificial intelligence. It's just, it's scary what uh, is really going on behind closed doors, the technology that's going on. But it says knowledge will be increased in these last days. And it says that the, the words of Daniel would be shut up until the time of the end. But they're going to be revealed. And these things weren't open until actually John, John the Revelator, was, was given this. John was told something, okay, first of all, Daniel was told some things up to the, the tribulation, which was supposed to be hidden and sealed until that time, but John was told things uh, about the tribulation, but he was told to seal the things that went beyond that, which would be the time of the millennial reign and after that eternity. Uh, for that, let's look at Revelation chapter 10, verse 4. 
The Bible says, And when seven thunders uttered their voices, I was about to write. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not, because those are things that were not meant uh, for the people that are going through the tribulation. This is for another time during the millennium. So God has things that are, are still sealed that won't be revealed until uh, the, the tribulation starts and then the people in the millennium will know. And then there's things that will be sealed all the way up to the millennial that the people in eternity will know. So it's a, there's, there's things yet to be revealed. The Bible says that the secret things belong unto God, but that which is revealed belongeth unto us and our children uh, for, forever. So uh, let's, okay, so knowledge will be increased. And I believe that this is also something that's taking place during the church age. Uh, for that, let's look at some other verses. Uh, Zechariah chapter 1, verses 10 through 11 says, And the man that stood among the myrtle trees, and we're going to get into this as we go into our Zechariah series, answered and said, These are they whom the Lord hath sent to walk to and fro through the earth. And they answered the angel of the Lord that stood, stood among the myrtle, myrtle trees and said, We have walked to and fro through the earth, and behold, all the earth, Sit is still and is at rest during the church age. During we have we've kind of had a, a a moment of time where there's a little bit of peace before this tribulation starts. Now, uh, the Bible says about this knowledge, about increasing knowledge. Uh, Proverbs twenty four verse five says, "A wise man is strong; yea, a man of knowledge increases strength." So when when our knowledge is increased, our spiritual strength increases. Colossians one ten says that you might might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. So we should be increasing in this knowledge. Not only does the Gentiles are increasing their knowledge of the physical things, but as Christians, as believers, we are to be increasing in spiritual knowledge as, as well. Now let's get back to the text, Daniel chapter 12, verses 5 through 6. I just want to get through this quickly so we can get on to the next series. But verse 5 says, Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood stood other two. Okay, maybe that's what uh, Zechariah was speaking. He's talking about these two, uh, the two among the myrtle trees. But uh, that we'll tie that in when we get to Zechariah. But back to Daniel chapter 12, verse 5. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, one on this side, and on the bank of the river, and the the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? Everybody wants to know. Don't you want to know how long is it going to be till the end? What, how long is it going to be till we have to put up with all of the nonsense that's going on in this world? How long will it be till Jesus returns? And the people during the tribulation, how long will this tribulation last? Uh, people are always... Uh, talk about getting back in time, back to the future, but we want to get into the future so we can get along, uh, get going into eternity. We want to get through this this matrix system as quickly as possible. How long is it going to be? Uh, that's also repeated in Revelation chapter 6, verse 10. And they cried with a loud voice, these martyrs that were martyred during the tribulation period, with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not, not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So everybody, even the dead, want to know, how long is it going to be? So, and another thing I wanted to notice uh, in this passage, Daniel 12, verses 5 and 6, it sounds very similar to Revelation chapter 10, verse 6, where this angel comes down and stands uh, with his, his foot uh, in the sea and on the land. Listen to this. And, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven, and the things that are therein are, and the earth, and the things that therein are, and the sea, and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. So that's, uh, that's what people want. People are waiting for this time to end so we can have eternity, time no longer. I got a little confused and kind of got ahead of myself, but what I was thinking of was this next passage about the angel with his foot on the sea and the land. Let's read uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse 7. And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river. So this may give a clue who this man is. I believe it's Jesus Christ, the 
uh, the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ, the angel of the Lord. And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, swearing by God the Father, that it shall be for a time, times and half a time, this great tribulation that will happen when the devil is, is uh, comes and possesses the, the body of the Antichrist. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Now, this really sounds familiar with Revelation chapter 10. In Revelation chapter 10, verses 1 and 2, and verse 5. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, this angel of the Lord, clothed with a cloud. The cloud, uh, we will meet him in the clouds. And a rainbow was upon his head, because his head's right above the firmament, or pressed up against the firmament. His face, as it were the sun, and his feet, as the pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth. And the angel which I stood, uh, saw stood upon the, sa the sea and upon the earth, lifted, lifted up his hand to heaven. Just as this, this angel here in Daniel 12, 7 did, lift his hand to heaven. Now let's go to Daniel now. Daniel chapter 12, verse 8. Daniel 12, verse 8. And I heard, but understood not. Then said, O, or then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? So Daniel seeing these things that's going on in the tribulation, he's wondering, what are these things? Uh James, James 1. You you can ask God too. We 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 need to ask him if there's something that we don't understand. Because he can show us, he can reveal things to us. The Bible says in James 1, verses 5 through 7, if any of you Lack wisdom, anybody. Let him ask of God, which giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let, a, let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. So if you want to know something, Daniel wants to know something, he'll, he'll tell you if things are sealed, he's not going to reveal them, obviously. But if there's things that he wants you to know, if you ask him, he get, he will give it to you liberally through his word. He will show you. And and Daniel's wanting to know what shall the end of these things be. Now let's let's read further. Daniel 12 verse 9. And he said, "Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end." So here we go. Things are going to be sealed till the time of the end. Uh God's word needs to be rightly divided. And he said, notice, he says, go thy way. There's some things that when we read the Bible, we have to rightly divide because some things are not going to apply to us. There's some things in this Bible that people are brutally massacring when it comes to the, uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament. They read the Gospels that were, that were spoken to Israelites, to the Jews, that were expect, expecting the physical kingdom. And they are trying to apply them to the church-aged Christians and believers, which were not true. But even Paul, he said there was a mystery hidden, even in the Old Testament. The mystery of the church was not revealed to Paul. And so these things, he says, go thy way, because we need to rightly divide, we need to rightly divide and understand that some things are just not meant for us in this church age. But he says, and let's read further. Uh, Daniel 12, verse 10, Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Now this angel of the Lord's telling Daniel this after he told him that these things are sealed to go his way. But he did explain that the trial, uh, that these things are going to, uh, these people are going to come forth uh, after they're purified. Now, I believe that this is the tribulation period. I believe that this is the trial of their faith that is spoken of in in the God or in the Gospels, the believing Jews during the tribulation. Notice that he said that the wicked will not understand this. Uh, Jesus made a reference to this as well. Matthew eleven verse twenty five. At that time, Jesus answered and said, "I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things." from the wise and prudent, and, and has revealed them unto babes. God has shown these things for the first time. These people that thought they knew everything, 
uh, they were finally sealed to, to the end time and they're finally revealed to the babes, people that will be born again. And I believe that uh, these things, some of these things that when it speaks of uh, back here in verse uh, 10, he says that the, the wicked shall not understand. I believe that that has a, some, some reference to the seed of Satan. Some things they're just not going to understand. Uh, Satan seed, they're like a deaf adder. They're not going to hear the words of God. Now, let's, we're getting close to the end here. Let's read Daniel 12, verse 11. And from that time, the daily sacrifice shall be taken away. And the abomination that make a desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. And this adds up to exactly three and a half years. The second part of the second, seven year, uh, the first half of the seven years, the, the Antichrist comes on the scene. He is killed assassinated but he comes back to life as he comes back to his body comes back to life the devil possesses him for the last three and a half years of the great tribulation so you have the tribulation for his three and a half years then the great tribulation the last uh three and a half years and this is what daniel's speaking of here in daniel twelve eleven. notice that about this uh this daily sacrifice is mentioned this is this is totally Jewish. This is not for the church. The church doesn't make physical sacrifices. They don't offer up lambs and, and goats and rams. They don't, they don't do that in this church age dispensation, but they will be doing it again during the tribulation period. Now let's look at Daniel 11.31. Daniel spoke of this in our last uh, lesson. He says, An arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice. First part of the tribulation, when the Antichrist comes, he makes a, a peace treaty with Israel, allows them to build their temple and to offer sacrifices. The second part, when Satan comes down, he's going to take away that daily sacrifice. And uh, and he's going to make, it, the Bible says, and they shall, shall place the abomination that make it desolate. Now, Jesus warned of this event as well. In Matthew uh, 25, or I'm sorry, Matthew 24, verses uh, 15 through 16. Jesus said this, when ye shall when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, when you see the antichrist during the when he comes up and he comes back from his mortal wound, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place in this temple during the millennial or I'm sorry, during the tribulation period, whoso readeth let him understand. So he's saying that this is the time this time will be unsealed, this time of the tribulation for these people that are going through the tribulation. It says, let him understand. Then, let them which be in Judea, didn't say United States, doesn't say Washington, D.C., doesn't say New York City, because this is speaking of Israel. It says, them which be in Judea, flee to the mountains. And that's where they run to hide from the, the Antichrist during the last period of the tribulation. Now, Couple, couple more nuggets here in Daniel chapter, uh, Daniel chapter twelve. Let's read verse twelve. Blessed is he that waiteth, and cometh to the under, uh, cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. So he's talking about blessed is he that waiteth. Uh, this, these are the people that are waiting for the second advent, waiting for the second return of Jesus Christ, not waiting for the rapture. Uh, the Bible says, "No man knoweth." It's a mystery. We, the whole world's not going to see the rapture. Only the church and the dead in Christ as they arise first. But the whole world's going to see this event. And they're going to see. And they're supposed to wait. Wait for this moment. Uh, this is the, the, like I said, the, the second part uh, at the end of the second advent. Or the, the end of the tribulation for the second advent. And notice during the church age. John says, blessed is he that readeth. We're not, I mean, yeah, we're supposed to be waiting for, for the blessed hope, but we are not waiting for the second advent return. That's for Israel. But G, John said, blessed is he that readeth. Because when you read, you rightly divide. You know you're in the right dispensation. The Bible says in Revelation 1, 3, blessed is he that readeth. And they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand, the rapture of the church. Uh, we are waiting. The Bible says a day with the Lord is, is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. I know this dispensation has been very long. How long? How much longer, Lord? How long do we have to wait? 
But the time is ready. Time is short. So we need to read for our blessed hope. These people have to wait and endure to the end for their, for their salvation. Now let's close with verse 13 of Daniel chapter 12. But go thou thy way till the end be. For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of thy day di- and the end of days. Now, after Daniel dies, his physical death, he's at rest in paradise till Jesus came and released the prisoners uh, at his death, uh, and then his burial, and then his resurrection, his ascension. But he was supposed to rest, it says, and stand in thy lot at the end of days. Now, how could that be possible? I believe that Daniel also has something to do with the book of Revelation. I believe that John actually spoke with Daniel. For that, let's read read Revelation 22, verses 8 through 10. And I, John, saw these things, and I heard them. And when, when I heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things, this angel. Now, remember... Earlier, Daniel said that they shall be as the angels, that shine as the, the stars of the firmament. So they, they were mistaken for angels. But then he said unto me, this what John thought was an angel, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant. Hey, I'm, I, was, I got these prophecies long before you did. I'm that fellow servant. And of thy brethren, he's Jewish. And of the prophets, he, this is a prophet Daniel. I believe that's what he's speaking of. And of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. Because that's what God told Daniel in Daniel 12. And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. uh, God told Daniel in Daniel 12, 13, that he was supposed to go that way till the end. And then his lot would be at the end. And then he said, Go ahead, John, don't seal these things anymore, for the time is at hand. The, the tribulation will be be happening after this church age period. And you know what? As we close this series, we close this series of Daniel, uh, this day can't come soon enough. It really can't. Um, the older I get, the more I, I mean, I, I love to, to be with my family. I love my wife, my children. I love uh, everything that God has blessed our family with. But to be honest with you, I, I would love nothing more than to be with Jesus Christ to be in the blessed hope, to get this whole thing over and done with so we can be with our Lord and Savior forever and and totally avoid the things that's coming uh, on this world for them that have denied and rejected Jesus Christ. So I can't wait for this day. Uh, and you know what the Bible says? Until that day happens, we need to be in fellowship one with another. We need to be uh, uh, encouraging, encouraging each other uh, telling each other the truth. Uh, when, when we get down, lift each other up, pray for each other. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. I mean, yeah, there's churches, but also getting together with our videos, uh, our media, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. If you are, if you're, unless you're totally blind, ignorant, or have the wrong spirit, if you can't see that the end is coming, I, I don't know what to tell you. But those, those of us that are awake and realize what's happening, we can encourage one another and build each other up and encourage each other to do great things for Jesus Christ while we still can. Well, hope this has been an encouragement. Uh, hope that uh, you enjoyed this series. And uh, but let's end this on a prayer. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for giving us your truth. And I pray that you would bless this series of Daniel. And I pray that you would return soon. That you would, I mean, we're all looking for the blessed hope. And we are all trying to encourage one another in these last days. And I pray that Jesus Christ comes soon, comes quickly, Lord. And please bless us now. And I thank you for it's in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Well, again, I thank you for watching this video. Thank you for watching this series. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless.